Man, you gotta remember me back, back from where I come from. Um, I don't need nobody to talk to me. Just bring me a horse I ride it. You understand me? And you will enjoy it just the same, no matter what the name, what kind of horse it is. You bring them on my ride, and they're gonna look just like the best horse in the world. So that's just what I do. So I don't really have a best interest in who really wins. I mean, you come to think of it, you look at how the thing is politically going right now. I mean, you got everything right now is going to where, like for instance, you got the Obama McCain fight going on. Yeah, me and Kelly Patrick get some water fight right now because people be more into it, you know. So I can't even tell you that it really matters to me which one we need. Before you jump, um, Jordan Ingram, Philadelphia Church. Uh, basically, with um, watching this fight, are you going to take a look with, with Kelly Padley, who you were talking about, and that, like, you know, defensive, like, like defensively, he's going to be going against probably and one of his toughest contests against the. Uh, Against Hopkins, obviously, do you think that, you know, watching that fight, that, that there might be some things you might be able to explain if you were able to fight him in the future? No, 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 no. Uh, me and Bernard are two totally different fighters. Um, like I say, the Ghost is a good fighter. He's strong, got a lot of power, uh, he got a good name, and um, he's definitely one to watch out for if you're going to stay in the game. But if you remember, I offered him, well, you might not know this, but right after my Trinidad fight, I offered to fight him at 170, he said no. So obviously he ain't done what we think he is. So he may be watching me closer in three weeks than I'm going to be watching him the next. Boy, what percentage of your best do you think you are right now? You know, when I look in the mirror, it looks like it's 115 percent. You know what I'm saying? Just I'd be like, wow, how can you just keep on getting better looking as you get older? <laughs> but I mean, then I can't do my head. I can't tell y'all everything. I mean, God, you got to fight me. I mean, three weeks, but. I'm pretty close to 100 percent. Trust me. Pretty, pretty close. Do you think Bernard exposed any holes in, in Calzaghe? No, he never really exposed holes in him. I mean, he exposed what we already knew. Brian Mission knocked him down. Um, it ain't the first time he's been down. Um, I thought he took Bernard a little lightly because he thought Bernard's age was going to be a factor, and it wasn't. So I think. I mean, not it. even the knockdown getting neutralized by the boxer. Um, yeah and no. Yeah, because, you know, Bernard does a lot of things a little different than I do. He did a lot more clinching and stuff than I probably keep knowing to do. So his style of doing it is totally different than my style of doing it. So I don't look at his way of doing it. I will be neutralizing, but not the same. Well, you said a number of times that you don't consider Kelsey to be anything special. What sort of weaknesses? <coughs> no, I didn't say I don't consider him to be nothing special. Like I told you, he punched more than anybody I've seen as far as my weight class goes. So I can't tell you he's not nothing special. That be, that's not true. I never said that. I said he ain't nothing special going to happen on his part that night. He is something special. All the things you've done in your career, Roy, I mean, you know, I haven't been the pound for pound guy, you know. Does it almost seem like at this point that it's been two different careers? I mean, two, you know. <laughs> you, you it seems like I did. It seems like I had about five careers over there. But see, that's my life. That's my whole life. My life is about going there, take that knockdown, come back. Take that knockdown, come back. Take that knockdown, and that knockdown, come back. My life is about having faith in Jesus Christ. You got faith in anything that you go through, you're going to come back through it. So when I have the faith that I got, it's like whatever they put in front of me, they can knock me down five times, they can't stop. You know what I'm saying? I get back up, I'm stronger than I was before I went down. And that's what they see right now. So it's like, for me, I'm having the time of my life. Where would you learn? When you uh, watch Kelly Pavlik, what, just, what comes to mind? I tell you the ghost can punch. That's about it. The ghost don't avoid punch that way, but he can punch. So to get him, he knows you got to give up something to get him. So, so, so far he hasn't shown me the type of defense that will keep me out of the state. But he does have a good offense. So you think his defense is his weakness? I ain't going to say it's his weakness, but I know that will be his weakness against me. In a nutshell, what drive you fight? In a nutshell, what drive you keep going right now? Well, like I tell people, you know, I go home, I sit down, and I start to think about it. I can't play in the World Series. I ain't gonna make the NBA Finals. I ain't gonna make the Super Bowl. But I still can fight like here. What would you be doing? How gratifying is it to put on an event like this is going to be at the Garden? Uh, you know, oh, I mean, you that's, that's, the best, that's the best place you could ever pick to have a big fight like this. Not only that. What else makes me feel good? I'm going to tell you right now, even after watching the fight last weekend, you see, and you watch all the press conferences, and you watch all the stuff going on in the fight with the, uh, with the talk, with the, uh, Chad Dawson fight. And the one thing that really stood out to me 
and that makes me feel really good about myself is to Gary Shaw and Miller both guys, he got both fighters, so he don't really care for winning because he still got the money. And he's a happy guy. In my fight, you won't see no Gary Shaw. You see Roy Jones, and you see Joe Calzaghe. And the winner gonna walk out the winner, and the loser gonna walk out the loser. And whatever we choose to do next is what we choose to do next. That's, that's, that's gratifying to me. And you were one of the first to really do that. I know a lot of guys have done it now, Oscar and all that, but uh, you were like one of the pioneers of that, getting your independence. How does that, that make you feel now? Uh, it's just, it's just like I said, once again, it's about my life. You know, it's just what I, my life is there not do what I choose to do. It's like God put me out there and said, go do this, and that's what I try to go do. What I ain't what I try to go do is what I go do. Hey, Roy, what, what is it like right here? When you, uh, because as George and uh, the other question about how you're doing this on your own with Joe, you know, you have to help with, you know, people like John and stuff in your company, but what is it like, I guess, when you met with Joe privately to discuss the fight? There was no promoter <coughs> handling the negotiations. It was the two men who were going to fight doing it. So what is it like to sit across the table on a couch and talk to the guy, business stuff, knowing that you're going to be two guys that actually get in the ring? Well, how does that, the, the personalities like, work with that? It's like, uh, for me, it's pretty easy because it's business, you know what I mean? I mean, it's like when I sit and talk to y'all, some, some people take what I say and write it just like I said. So you take what I say and put a switch on it and write it how they want to write it. But at least I was mad enough to fairly sit down fairly with you and tell you my spin on it. Now if you turn it around, that's on you. You understand me? So the same with him. I'm going to sit down with you 50-50 and tell you how it is and how it should be and how we can make a deal happen. After that deal happens, now well, how you go prepare for the fight, that's on you. I'm going to go get ready. I'm going to tell you that too. But is it just weird to sit with the guy that you're going to... What's weird about it? We, 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 we about to share something. We about to share you in with all these other reporters. Y'all yeah, ain't writing for the same paper. Are the same people. <laughs> so it's never weird about it. And like I said, it just it don't look like it don't look like we have somebody that owns us or telling us what to do. We're doing it ourselves. That's what it felt like. So it felt to me like it's it's gratifying that we can be our own people. We can make a fight happen just like we don't need a mediator to make us fight. We don't need a mediator to keep us apart before we get to the fight. Now we might need a mediator to get me off of him. <laughs> 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 You um, you said earlier um, you want to in the fight you want to try to you want to try to neutralize uh, you want to try to neutralize um, Cal Zagman. How do you how do you neutralize a guy that, that's as active as him that's throwing as many punches as him? Always going to well, if I tell you, if I tell you that he got three weeks to get rid of that, so I can't tell you that right now. But Tony and November eighth, I'm gonna show you. Um, also, Roy, also, you know, you were talking about you watched um, the, the press conference with Tarver and with um, with Dawson. Um, did you get a chance to see the fight last week? Yes, sir. So. What did um, what did you take out of um, out of out of the Dawson fight? That was the first time I had seen somebody doing six, seven, eight punch combinations. Dawson, you. Dawson, Dawson watched a lot of Roy Jones. That's what I saw. I saw people watch a lot of Roy Jones. And he ain't scared to tell me. He's so true. But when I see him at first, he tell me, "I don't watch. I'm, I'm next." And uh. You know, when I get ready, I want y'all to come check me out, see what, see what it is. So he been using me as a measure to stick his whole career. He don't care nothing about fighting him. He want to fight me. I know he want me. Because he, when he comes to me, he makes reference to, yeah, I know. I know what you are. And I want to be there. So I know he got a cause for the Roy Jones tape. How, how, anxious are you, how anxious are you to do it? I talked to him earlier today. He was saying, like, hey, he would love, he would love to do that. Now, of course. You know, he's Chad Dawson. Now, Roy Jones, when you go to fight Roy Jones, too. <laughs> well, of course he would, yeah. So, I mean, the dude pretty good. He a pretty good fighter. I ain't gonna take nothing away from him. Uh, he has been down a few times. Could be dangerous me fighting. How long did it take you to, to sort of get back to yourself from coming about three years? From doing, from about three years. What was it? What was the biggest problem or the biggest adjustment that you had to make physically just coming back down? The biggest adjustment was first getting the weight down to where it stay off. Because it was muscle mass. Then the second one was, all right, now that you back down your right size, you cycle. Like, okay, can you go back to doing what you used to do before you went up there and did that? And I had to think about it. See, so, you know, that's a good question. Can you go back to doing it? And I have slowly but surely got back to doing it. And as you can tell, that they talk about me a lot. But they ain't stupid. I had three fights in three years. One of the biggest names in the last two decades in boxing, and I had three fights in three years. That's how hard it was to find somebody that didn't have enough sense to say no. Was, was there a point? Was there a point where you knew just in the gym that you had gotten back 
to being where you were? No, you because were? because truthfully, each time in them three in them three in them three roads and three crossroads each fights time. I had to take, each time stuff got better and better and came together. And this time it's come together even even better than I had in those three. So I've only I've been constantly progressing since the first. Good if you have any regrets, Roy, what would be the biggest regret you have in your career? That I didn't let people see my face more often because, I mean, how could you not deny people this? <laughs> <laughs> That's the only regret I got. You know what I mean, it's really wrong that I didn't come out every day like I should be talking to y'all every day. I should tell y'all what's in my mind every day. That's the only problem I had. So you mean dealing with the press, basically? Not necessarily the press, just everybody. Anybody who went into look and want to see something smile that day, I should have been talking to them. I, I, I denied a lot of people a lot of smile. Why? I don't know why. I just be forgetting. I be getting caught up in this world. You can't get caught up in the world. You got to remember what your purpose was. And I got caught up in the world. And it's like, even when I look back at when I fought Charles and Johnson and Charles and it's like, I was fighting them, but was I fighting them because I wanted to fight them? Mm. No, I ain't have nothing planned. I can't tell you the last time I had something planned for my fans when I went inside a boxing ring. Outside of just boxing. I, I used to always be in camp. I always had something planned for y'all. For y'all to have it right about the next day. Not only did we see where I beat this dude, but he did this. He did that. I, I can't tell you since John Reese that I've had that anymore. That means that truthfully, and I'm, I'm sorry, I gotta apologize to y'all too, but truthfully, I've been cheating all of us because I ain't been bringing the extra baggage to the table like I used to bring because it wasn't in my heart to do it like that. I was so hard trying to lose the weight and just kind of fulfill what people want me to <coughs> just get caught up into, like I said. You get caught up in the ways of the world just trying to do it for people for what they say they want to see instead of doing what you want to do. Now my bag of tricks back home. Now I got something back for y'all. Now I got some making up to do. Hey Roy, did you ever, in relation with Tim, asked you a couple seconds ago, did you ever seriously consider you made a yeah. great accomplishment in heavyweight? Don't think about that. Time. Don't waste time. They ain't never caught my mind. Never? Yes, sir. Roy, uh, Joe Calzaghe, in talking about his future, put a condition on his future. He said that if he wins uh, his fight with you, he's going to retire. Yeah. It's like that. that. I'm saying he put a condition on his future. Yes, it is. Yes. Yes. So that if he wins. Something if me is a lot of freaking thinking going on. That's what that if stands for. So okay. if he beat me, he gonna be so happy that he gonna have a choice but to go with the time. <laughs> you understand me? But that's what that if is all about. So what he's trying to tell you is if Roy Jones hasn't completely turned back into his old self, I can win. But if he has, <sighs> Well, let me ask the second part. Now. Oh yeah, I'll fight him again. Let's, drop him with that. Let's, 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 let's let me let me put it this way: Are there any conditions on your future? Like if if, if you if the fight didn't turn out the way you expected to turn out, mm -hmm. will you continue on regardless? As good as I feel right now, why not? I just go off my feet and the way I'm feeling right now, even training and all. Why not? I mean, I have I have nothing. It's like to be honest with you, most of the guys boxing right now. I forgot more than the other day. Mm. You understand? That's how much of a better my to be gauge. And to have me feeling good and motivated and have a good time with me, why stop? Do you, do you think you maximize your time as the pound for pound number one guy as far as fighting the, the top guys in your division? Oh, most definitely. I went, look, look where I went. I went everywhere. Heavyweight, light, heavyweight, super light. I didn't care where it was. They called my name, here I come. So, I mean, what other guy that you know could do that or that did that successfully? You understand? If they called my name, I went. And that same thing, like they came in to hunt me, but when they call my name, I go. So, I mean, I think I did, uh, I, I think I took perfect advantage of my opportunity. Well, when, when Sugar Robinson said the best he ever was was the night before the guy named Steve Beloit. Mm -hmm. I always said the best he ever was was the night before Steve and Big Cat went. What fight was the best he ever saw the world doing? Well, every day just flowing work. I don't know yet, because I ain't through. <laughs> <laughs> might be two, three weeks. But has there one maybe that don't stand out? Because I be so fast, half time being forgot, or I be with D. I go and take myself. And you have it so fast, I be going to the corner. Hey, did I just do that? Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, oh man, I gotta go home and see this tomorrow. But so I really can't tell you because I ain't really. And when you sit down and start watching yourself to see how good you really are, mm -hmm. that's time for you. But the few ever stop, cause they gonna catch you when you stop and hesitate. So I can't stop yet and look at it like that yet. I gotta keep it moving if I'm playing on staying ahead of the game. If you stop and kick your feet up and see how you're doing. 
By the time you put my down, take off, yeah, yeah, but that's the way of the super. So I, I have done it. Yeah. What do you feel best about it? What do you feel best about as far as your career? Oh, my hip weight. The hip weight, the middle of the hip weight championship, they come back down and regain and like hip weight championship. Mm -hmm. It's like the hardest of all that. Um, I'm sorry. Um, throughout your career, mm -hmm. you've been an overwhelming favorite in almost all of your fights. Mm -hmm. But this time, uh, a lot of people go against you. A lot of people see you as the underdog. Does that uh, motivate you a little bit more to prove your doubt is wrong? I mean, you know, what, what, I was, what, I, what I was doing with that did, they used to work for me a lot. When they used to doubt me, that made me really, really want to do it. But I had more um, animosity toward people doubt me back then than I do now. Now I've gotten a little smarter and a little older, and I realized that when they doubt you, it's like, you have to talk about to prove point. Just make sure you prove what the real point is. And the real point is when God is playing, who can be against you? Well, you talk, you've mentioned a couple of times about being smarter as a man today. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, I'm taking that to mean outside, you know, your personal life, outside mm -hmm. the ring. What about inside the ring? Do you think you're a smarter fighter? Nah, he still ain't got too much sense inside the ring. I'm just gonna keep it real with you. Right. I mean, because I know you took pride in your being faster than the other guy when you fought. Who said it? Mm -hmm. Oh, Joe. Rumor has it. Rumor has it. Oscar might be gay. How we feel about rumors? <laughs> How I feel about rumors? <laughs> hey, Roy. Uh, the Bernard uh, Calzaghi fight. I know that uh, the judges scored it uh, for Calzaghi. Did you feel that he won? He won if you scored the fight. Well. If you tell me that ain't a white boy gonna beat you and I'm a white judge and it's that close, of course you lost. My little sister tell me, I'm gonna be able to tell you, tell you my little sister tell me to be best. And my sister always, and she 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 stands firmly behind when she tell me. She called me every day, every morning she wants to take me and send her a picture, right? My sister tell me that I'm God's comedian. <laughs> and I believe in a sense because my life is having fun making people laugh. That's all I ever used to do. The last five years I backed away from that because I got so caught up into the hard work of just trying to lose that weight, just trying to do different things, trying to accomplish what people say you gotta do and you get away from having the, the time of your life entertaining people. So you know, you're supposed to fellowship at all times. When you leave the day, you're supposed to leave here with a good spirit knowing that hey, I don't care what they say about Roy, if I get to talk to him again, I'm going to talk to him. Because he's a good dude. You understand where I'm coming from? And it's like when you lose that, for me, that's my edge. If I ain't having fun, I ain't being me. So if you ever see me again and I'm not having time to talk or having time to enjoy myself, you know something wrong with me. What's your first name? Katandria. C A T A N D R E A. Black stuff. <laughs> what's, what's, your, what's your philosophy on being lazy in that royal black stuff? You said something about it. The reason why you're always late to press conferences, I remember you just mentioned Oh, that. back in the day? Yeah. Because see, if something happened, I ain't going to be there. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. If something happened, uh, something happened in the press conference, I wouldn't be there yet. So I ain't nothing happen to me because I have to make sure it's all safe for the job going to check it out. Then I show up. All right. Is, is boxing uh, still fun for you? Is it more business? I don't know if boxing is the talking part is fun. No, because you ain't listening to a dang old thing I can see. It. <laughs> I have <laughs> Boxing has got that to me, bro. That's what I was telling these guys. So it wasn't fun for a little while. It was like a business. But it has got that to be fun. When did it get fun again? Was uh, it like the first fight back with a jungle or the second fight back? You know what? The first fight got kind of fun with a jungle because I knew they had called me. They called me to set me up. This guy had this money he's going to put into a jungle, and he's going to use me as a stepping stone to get a jungle kicked off to the right start. I was like, oh yeah? Okay, I'll do that. So I went out there, beat up on this little man for him, pushed him on that way, and I came back. Then they say, you know, I looked at Joe, and I knew Joe was going to fight me.
So when he got Anthony Hanshaw, and they said, you know, this is a perfect opportunity to fight an undefeated young guy. Joe ain't that young, but he's undefeated. So let me go out and see can I still change your mind when I feel like I want to. So I went out there and spanked up on him, changed his mind, went to the fight with four stitches in my eye, playing basketball. You know, I still ain't too smart, I told you that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I still hung on and handled that pretty easy. So then the Tito fight come up. And, you know, like I told him, it wasn't for me and Tito, I basically fought Tito for free. Right. Because I knew Tito was going to take a whip him. And I knew Don was going to give him my money. <laughs> <laughs> but I also had sense enough to know that unless I beat Tito or somebody with the caliber of the name of Tito, I won't get to fight Joe. So I had to do that in order to get to where I had to go next. So sometimes you got to be able to know when the time to sacrifice and take that move. That was the time I needed to sacrifice and take that move. But it still was fun, as long as I ain't getting beat, I'm fine with that. Well, well you've had a lot of big fights in your career. Do you sense that for Joe, when you when you meet him and talk to him about this fight, that this is pretty much the signature fight of his career, the way he wants to I don't know. I don't know if this is going to be the signature fight of his career or not. It, it, that was a point though, yet. He wanted to fight me, his dad wanted to fight me, his son wanted to fight me, his wife wanted to fight me, his mama wanted to fight me, his country wanted to fight me. Of course. <laughs> I mean, who don't want him to fight me? So this got to be the biggest fight of his career. Everybody he knows say, go fight Roy. They've been saying that for 10 years now. And now he get an opportunity to do it. So it definitely has to be the biggest fight of his career. Did, Roy, you, did you ever get your money from them? No, nah, I won't worry about that. You're not worried about it? I mean, you know, you, live, you win some, you lose some. I knew what I was going to do when I went in. My job wasn't to worry about the money getting me done. My job was to get to this next situation and be free of that. Yeah, I was about to say, did you leverage that to exactly. free? Exactly. Okay. See, God well, works in mysterious ways. See, most of y'all can't figure it done out. You got to know what you're dealing with. You understand me? And we still cool, because I know how he is. I know what he wanted when he started. How much money does he owe you for that? Man, he don't owe me nothing now. We good. Before you, um, you said, um, I don't know. You know, you don't want to play with five too long and get burned. I don't know. You, know, you got to really think about how you do this. You know what I'm saying? I mean, right now, I'm ready to go, go down to the way to do it. But um, I don't like to jump when they tell me to jump. You feel me? So it's like, I don't like to be able to predict my next move. You understand me? Because I ain't in charge there. So when they think I'm coming high, I might go low. When they think I'm going low, I might come high. And when they think I ain't coming, I ain't coming down. 